For those who work for administrative agencies, such as the FDA, EPA, or even the IRS, or those who work with administrative agencies, the phrase Chevron deference has been part of their lexicon for 40 years. As of just a few days ago, no more. The Supreme Court overruled this long-term staple of administrative law on June 28, 2024. Administrative agencies, though managed and run under the president as part of the executive branch of government, draw their authorities from Congress. Enabling acts, by which Congress creates and gives authority to agencies, give the agencies their scopes, mandates, and authorities. Within those authorities, the agencies can make rules that have the power of federal law. For example, preventing passengers from carrying more than 3.4 ounces of liquid through security, or that you need a prescription to buy Ozempic, are rules of the TSA and FDA, respectively. Because can Congress can't possibly get that detailed in making laws, it delegates the authority to do so to the agencies. Similarly, agencies sometimes have to interpret the law relevant to their scope. Tax laws are necessarily subject to interpretation, and so the IRS has to issue a constant stream of revenue rulings and private letter rulings to give their interpretations of tax law. It's this duty and responsibility where our case comes in. The Chevron case, decided in 1984, revolved around interpretation of the term statutory source of pollution under the Clean Air Act. The court ruled that where the intent of Congress is not clear, the courts should not simply impose their own construction on the statute, rather the courts must defer to the agency, as long as the agency has put forth a permissible construction of the statute. This Chevron deference, as it came to be known, morphed into a presumption that Congress, when it leaves an ambiguity, understands that the ambiguity would be resolved by the agency in charge of the field and that Congress intended that the agency, rather than the courts, interpret the ambiguity. On June 28th, however, in Loper Bight Enterprises v. Romando, the Supreme Court ruled that Chevron was inconsistent with the Administrative Procedures Act, an earlier federal statute governing administrative agencies. The court observed that the Administrative Procedures Act requires reviewing courts to decide all relevant questions of law. Although the court is fine with allowing agencies to make factual determinations about the cases before them, when it comes to questions of law or statutory interpretation, courts must exercise their constitutional duty to interpret the law. The court called Chevron deference misguided because agencies have no special competence in resolving statutory ambiguities. Courts do. It is the courts who are trained to confront statutory ambiguities and expected to resolve them by exercising independent legal judgment. The most obvious effect of the overruling of Chevron deference is that it will limit the abilities of agencies to change the way things are done. Every administrative agency must now be prepared to defend every action it takes against a de novo review by courts. That means they don't get the benefit of the doubt when it comes to interpreting federal law. Just in the past few years, new climate regulations have been promulgated by the Environmental Protection Agency, the Federal Trade Commission has banned certain non-compete agreements, and the Department of Labor adjusted overtime pay rules. If these actions are challenged, these agencies will need judges to agree that these regulations were called for by their enabling acts. One potential positive impact of overruling Chevron is consistency and reliability for businesses. For example, the Detroit Chamber of Commerce observed that the decision will lead to businesses being able to plan farther out into the future across presidential terms. Under Chevron, with a potentially new president every few four years, agencies were able to flip-flop in their interpretations of their own regulations regularly, and left businesses waiting until post-election to determine their business decisions. Now moving forward, the decisions of what agencies will do require more certainty and must stand up to increased legal scrutiny. The instability and overreach of agencies hampers efficiency, investment, and advancements. On the other hand, some warn that the decision may hamper the abilities of agencies to do their jobs. 
Neil Hutchins, a professor at the University of Kentucky College of Education, writes that the decision will make it harder for federal agencies to issue broader regulations, which could affect their ability to affect policy changes in a wide swath of areas, and it could, it could have important implications for the rights of students and employees, with critics of the decision worrying that federal agencies will be hampered in enacting rules to protect individuals from harms that include discrimination. While the precise effect of the decision is as of yet unclear, what is clear is that, for better or for worse, we live in a system where agencies have a lot less power and authority than they did just a few days ago.